Hello everyone, Yossi Kaplan here, your friendly Toronto and Costa Rica realtor. Today we're going to talk with Anna Golan Resnick, who is a certified financial planner in Ontario, about the implications of moving from Canada to another country, in our case to Costa Rica, and how it can affect us financially. Now, <clears throat> for every rule in the tax world, there are a million. Um, <clears throat> oh. For every rule in a tax world, there are a million of, of, of not rule and, and subjective uh, rulings and all that. So everything we're going to tell you here is more to pique your interest, but it's definitely not financial advice and not legal advice. Okay. Hi, Anna. How are you? Hi, Yossi. Hi. I'm good. Very good. So, Anna, I have 12 questions ready for you. And these 12 questions, I believe, will cover a lot of the info the people that moved to, uh, from Canada to Costa Rica would like to know. Now, I'll tell our audience that some people move to uh, Costa Rica on a part-time basis, less than six months a year, and some people move for the full time, and that's going to make a difference, which you're going to see in the answers uh, coming. Now, all of these answers and information we give you is really just to pick your interest. Um, it's not financial advice. It's not a full answer. We're just going to give you a little bit of a hint of what to know and what questions to ask when you get a financial planner. Uh, Anna's information is below. Uh, this, uh, I'll disclose we have no uh, referral between us, so this is absolutely on a volunteer basis. Uh, no one's getting paid here. We're not um, sending clients to each other or anything like that, so you can rest assured the information you get here is directly from Anna. If you'd like to work with her, you're more than welcome to. You don't have to go through me or anything like that. Okay, Anna, I'm going to start right away. And the first question that everyone, everyone asks is, do I still need to pay Canadian taxes if I move to Costa Rica? So I wish there would be simple answer to this question. Uh, unfortunately, CRA determines um, everyone's situation on a case by case basis. They may review some primary ties that you may live in Canada, such as your home, um, your family. Um, they even look into secondary tires, like if you have bank accounts in Canada or your driver license is still in Canada. Um, so they may consider, like if you have a lot of these ties, they may consider you a tax resident of Canada. What does it mean for you that you may um, end up paying worldwide income or you would have to pay taxes on both Canadian and non-Canadian income? Okay, so in, any rental income, any investment uh, interest that you may receive in Costa Rica, you may need to report and pay taxes on it in Canada. Thank you. And, and obviously, I'll say it one, one more time and the last time, uh, real life situations are more complex. This is just to give you an idea of what to think about, what questions to ask. Okay, um, departure tax. What is departure tax and what do I need to know as a Canadian moving to Costa Rica about departure tax? If you become a non-resident of Canada, uh, many Canadians forget about this, but um, there is a departure tax or um, CRA called it a dim disposition as well. So what does it mean dim disposition? It means that if you continue to hold assets in the eyes of CRA, you deem to dispose all of these assets at fair market value um, and then require them for the same amount if you left Canada. So that may include things like stocks, bonds, mutual funds that you hold in non-registered account, um, foreign real estate. And if these assets increase in value, you may need to pay capital gains on, on your final Canadian tax return, even if you technically still hold these assets and uh, has not sold them. Thank you. That, that's really, really important to know. Okay. Um... CPP and OAS, can I receive, if I retire abro abroad, can I receive CPP and OAS? Yes, you can, but there are some conditions to meet. So good news about uh, CPP or Canada Pension Plan, you can receive it anywhere in the world because it's based on your contributions. Mm -hmm. But it's different for old age security uh, because you need to actually have lived in Canada for at least 20 years after age of 18 to qualify for old age security if you retire abroad. Okay, thank you. Um, withholding tax, um, I've heard a lot about it. Can you give me an, a quick idea of what withholding tax is and if we could minimize that? 
Sure. So if you become non-resident of Canada, you would only need to have to pay taxes on your Canadian source income. So some of these income sources, such as uh, CPP, OS, your pension income, um, dividends, or even the rental income, um, they will be withholding tax of 25% um, that you would have to pay if you are a resident of Costa Rica. So this amount would be withheld basically from, from your pension or CPP or OS before you receive it. Okay, thank you. Uh, similar question, uh, how can I maximize my retirement income? Are there any strategies for it if I move to Costa Rica? Uh, there are different strategies um, that uh, we as financial planners can implement with our clients. Uh, some of them may include, for example, optimizing your Canada pension plan and old age security benefits. And you can consider implementing direct deposit options for CPP and OS into local bank account in Costa Rica. Uh, we can plan for RSP reef withdrawal strategically to mi minimize any tax and optimize your retirement income in Costa Rica. Thank you. Um, Anna, can I keep my Canadian investment accounts if I move to Costa Rica? Usually you can keep your bank accounts without any problems, uh, but um, it's different for investment accounts because it will be depending on, on your bank or your in, in, of your investment firm policy. Um, many investment advisors and many investment firms may have uh, policies where they may have some restrictions for non-residents, meaning that some of them uh, may, may not be able to hold your accounts once you become a non-resident, and they even can require you to transfer your account somewhere else within 30 to 60 days after you move. Mm -hmm. So it's very important to talk to your advisor and, and uh, investment company to see which accounts you can keep and what changes you can make after you move abroad. Thank you. Okay, the next one I got for you is, um, what? <laughs> that's a good one. What happens to my RSPs and TFSA when I move abroad? Good question, definitely. So you can keep both accounts when you move abroad, but there are some differences. Um, so for RSP, you can generally keep and continue benefit from tax deferred growth for your investments. You can even make contributions if you still have contribution room, but it just becomes not advantageous to do so because you may not have any Canadian income to offset these contributions. For TFSA, you can keep the TFSA account as well, but you are not able to make any contribution. It is very important. You're not able to make any contributions because if you make, you may have some penalties for that. Thank you. Um, RESPs, what should I do with my RSP if I moved to Costa Rica? So uh, RESP, this is education saving plan for your child. And if your child is moving to Costa Rica together with you, sometimes it becomes not official to keep these investments in Canada. Technically, you don't have to deregister this account uh, because maybe your child will be coming back to study in Canada. Right. right? But uh, you're not able to make any contributions if your child is non-resident because, again, it will lead to significant penalties. And if the child um, basically stays, for example, and um, attend post-secondary education in Costa Rica, um, so the educational grants may go back to the government and they will be withholding taxes for withdrawals from RESPs. I see what you mean. Thank you. Okay. Um, do I need a financial plan or financial planning or planner if I wanted to move from Canada to Costa Rica? Uh, definitely you do need financial plan when you move because um, there are many Canadians that move outside of Canada uh, to Costa Rica and they just run out of the money because they did not plan ahead, right? So when you work on your financial plan, you do plan ahead. You take in proactive actions that help you to sustain your lifestyle abroad for a long term. That makes sense. And we don't want anyone to run out of money when they move. We want them to live comfortably. Yes. Um, Anna, if I wanted to sell my principal residence in uh, Toronto, Ontario, or Canada, um, can I do it when I live in Costa Rica? And what are the implications? 
Uh, yes, you can sell your Canadian home after moving to Costa Rica, but there are some considerations. Uh, many Canadians assume they can sell their principal resident tax-free at any time, but it's far from the truth because mm -hmm. uh, the principal resident exemption that basically you can benefit when you live in Canada, uh, this principal resident exemption has limitations when you move abroad. Okay, you can still qualify for a partial exemption, but it's only for the years you were a Canadian resident, plus one mm. additional year. So the longer you've been in Costa Rica, the less valuable this exemption becomes. Um, in addition to that, if you sell your uh, real estate in Canada after you're a non-resident of Canada, there is a 25% withholding tax as well um, from the gross proceeds of the sale. Okay, thank you. So similar to um, investors which are not Canadian, they subject to that 25% as well. Exactly. Okay. All right, thank you. Um, <laughs> that's a good one. Um, what are the Canadian tax obligations for a Canadian resident who owns and rents out a property in Costa Rica? And that could be someone who goes to Costa Rica and buys an Airbnb, for example, right? or yes. maybe lives in the villa and then rents out a couple of rooms. Yes, so mm -hmm. basically, even if you are a Canadian resident, um, you have to report uh, rental income that you own, that, that basically that you receive in Costa Rica in Canada. You may pay taxes on this as well. So first of all, you would have to report and pay this um, uh, in Costa Rica right um, and you may qualify for some foreign tax credit as well but what many canadians uh, forget is to report this income in canada and that can lead to significant penalties by cra right thank you okay my last question on the list before i'm going to ask you about uh, your practice is um uh, property investment abroad in canadian estate planning what do I need to know about these things? So what many Canadians forget is to check um, to check if their Canadian will uh, will be effective in Costa Rica. But most of the cases, in most of the cases, it's not. So basically, your will will not be recognized in Costa Rica usually. And this could lead to complications to own a property there. Um, additionally, Costa Rica has different inher inheritance laws than Canada. Um, which could affect also how property is distributed after your death. So it's definitely recommended to talk to, um, to basically to estate planner in Costa Rica when you buy a property there. And um, it could be also good to consider creating a Costa Rican will, a separate will for your assets in Costa Rica. Thank you. That, that's great. I never thought about it before. So thank you very much, Anna. These are all my questions uh, for today. Now I'd like to learn a bit about um, your practice and how people could reach you. Sure. Um, so we specialized in uh, financial and retirement planning uh, tailored for Canadians moving abroad. Uh, we work a lot with Canadians moving to Costa Rica, Panama, anywhere else in the world. Um, to reach out to us, basically, I'm not sure if you uh, have a link to the website, um, but yeah. It's on yeah. Now. So if you go to our website, there is an option to book um, 30 minutes free consultation with me, um, where we go through your situation um, and um, we'll determine if we can work well together. Um, so, so that's basically where I would start. Book 30 minutes free consultation, and I'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have. That's great. Let me bring that, uh, let me bring your page up. Let me know how I do it. Uh, here we go. So this is your page, right? Yeah. And just on the bottom, um, on the bottom right side, oh, you see, see book a free uh, introductory call. call. Yeah. Does it show? Can you yes. See? All yes, right. So that's see. that's how to book Anna. Go to her website, uh, Smart Move FP, and book a call from there with Anna and take it from there. Thank you, Yossi. Anna, thank you very much. That was uh, so. Uh, I've learned how much I don't know, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm glad we have people like you uh, that help people to financial plan when they move from Canada to Costa Rica or other places.
Thank you, Yossi. And may I just uh, add something very important that I found uh, when I was working with uh, clients moving abroad is that um, sometimes you neglect the, impo neglect the importance of personalized planning. And uh, many, many Canadians unfortunately make their financial decision uh, based on um, just relying on social media platforms like Facebook, mm -hmm. for example, right? Uh, but someone else's advice and comments may not be applicable to you. So this is where it can really lead to costly mistakes. So work with professionals. It doesn't have to be me, but just to reach out to somebody who is a professional in the field. Um, so you discuss your personal circum circumstances, personal situation, and make informed decisions before you move and plan you ahead. Much. Zoe, Anna, uh, I cut you off. I just wanted to say plan ahead before you plan move. ahead. Thank you very much, Anna. It was a pleasure and see you soon. Thank you, Yossi.